Why are you here? May I suggest it's because you have dreams for sale for you and dreams for sale for others. The power of a dream. I get involved in the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We raise money for terminally ill children. If this child's last dream wish is, is to go to Disneyland or Disney World before he dies, we raise enough money to send the child and his or her entire family to Disneyland, Disney World, the most requested dream wish in the Make-A-Wish Foundation. To see the expression of love, of happiness, of pure joy that comes on a little kid's face when he gets to meet Mickey Mouse for the first time, it just rips your heart out. Here we have these little guys. They're doing everything they know how to do to live one more day. Can you imagine? Take one more step. Can you imagine? Breathe one more little teeny tiny breath of fresh air. And some of us have the audacity to kick back and say, get off my back, mom. Get off my back, dad. Get off my back, employer. Get off my back, teacher. Get off my back. We had this little kid in the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He wanted to play one-on-one -on -one basketball with Michael Jordan. He wanted to take all of his buddies with him so that they would believe him. We flew 10 little guys into Chicago, and Michael Jordan, being the class human being that he is, he decides to play the little kid at the little kid's game. Little kid's in a wheelchair. So what does Michael Jordan do? He gets in a wheelchair too. Let me interrupt. Sales 101, the only place from which a person can grow is where he or she is. We have to go where they are physically and emotionally. Only there can we gently invite them to buy. Parenting 101, the only place from which our children can grow is where he or she is. We have to go where they are physically and emotionally. Only there can we gently invite them to make the right decisions and become responsible citizens. Customer service 101, you name it, it's the same quote, the same principle. We have to go where they are. They can't be expected to come where we are. Who are we fooling? Michael Jordan understood that, so what does he do? He gets in a wheelchair too, and you should have seen the matchup. Michael Jordan looked like he was caught in one of those revolving doors at the mall. He couldn't even drive it. He's like, whoa, little kid was different. He'd been in the chair for so long, he didn't miss a shot. Choo. Choo. Pops a wheelie the whole length of the basketball court at the end of the matchup. He's got that look on his face like, Shaquille O'Neal, you ain't so bad. Kobe Bryant, come to my summer clinic. Dennis Rodman, when you get through going through menopause, you phone me. <laughs> Make-A-Wish Foundation for Terminally Ill Children has dreams for sale. So do you. Usain Bolt. Every single person on our planet who is engaged in any kind of speed sport knows his name idolizes his movements, analyzes how he does what he does, and practices his finishing move. How cool would that be if you had people idolizing you? Dreams for sale. The Make-A-Wish Foundation started down in Phoenix, Arizona, where I'm originally from. Lady has a little boy, her son's name is Bopsy. Bopsy is dying of terminal leukemia. At the present time, there's no known cure. One day, his mother has the presence of mind to go to little Bopsy, and she said, Bopsy, if you had one dream wish and you knew that it would come true, what would it be? Let me interrupt. If you had one dream wish and you knew that it would come true, what would it be? And how cool would it be if you knew that it would come true? What we are attracted to is excellence and the power of a dream allows us to rise to the occasion. Without even thinking about it, Bob, she said, Mommy, if I had one dream wish and I knew that it would come true, I'd want to be a fireman. Next morning, his mother phones up the local fire department. She talks to the fire chief, explains Bobsy's health condition and his dream wish. Turns out the fire chief has a heart as big as this beautiful ballroom. He says, you know, I would love to help make Bobsy's dream come true. You tell him that we'll be by to pick him up at 7 o'clock in the morning. We'll make him honorary fire chief for the whole day. Fire chief says, you know, down here in Phoenix, we have a factory that makes all of our uniforms. If you'll give me Bobsy's measurements, we'll get a hard hat helmet made for him just like the big guys wear. We'll get him a yellow slicker jacket to wear. We'll get him big rubber boots, big galoshes to wear just like the big firemen wear. Sure enough, the next morning, 7 a.m., local fire department pulls right up in front of Bobsy's house. They all go inside of Bobsy's house. They help Bopsy get decked out in his very own fireman's uniform, and they all walk out of Bopsy's house. Looks like a bunch of big ducks, little teeny duck. 
Bobsy's walking in the back of this long line of firemen in these oversized rubber boots. All of his buddies in the neighborhood are looking out their windows going, whoa. Bobsy hops on the back of the fire engine. He gets to go out on three fire calls. It inspires him to the depth of his being to live three months longer than any doctor said he could possibly live. On the last night of Bobsy's short life in the hospital, the head nurse was monitoring his vital signs, his heart rate, his blood pressure hooked to the machine. So they started to weaken and diminish, fade quickly away. So she immediately phones up, Fire Chief, Bobsy's not doing too good right now, and I thought you'd like to know about it. Maybe there's something you could do for him. Fire Chief says, you tell that little guy to hang on. We'll be there in five minutes. But this time, there's two things we need you to do for us. Fire Chief asked the nurse, could you please announce over the PA system of the hospital somewhere where Bobsy can't hear it? That everyone's going to hear the sirens screaming. They're going to see the lights flashing that we're coming to see our little boy Bobsy for the last time. And then the fire chief asked the, the nurse, could you also open up the third story window into Bobsy's hospital room? Because this time we're coming in by hook and ladder. <laughs> Moments later, the sirens are screaming. The lights are flashing. The whole entire fire department pulls right up in front of the hospital. Huge ladder goes up the wall. 14 firemen and two firewomen scamper up the ladder, every one of them decked out in full fireman's uniform. Every single one of them climbed in through that third story window into Bobsy's hospital room. They kissed him, they held him, they cuddled him, they caressed him. With tears streaming down everyone's cheeks, the big macho fire chief leans over Bobsy's hospital bed, takes a hold of his little teeny weak frail hand. Bobsy looks up at him, he says, fire chief, am I now really a fireman? Fire chief said, Bobsy, you are. And the little guy died. True story. Happens every day in the Make-A-Wish Foundation chapters. Question, ladies and gentlemen, is that a story about death? Or is that a story about life? Is that a story about the power of a dream and how it changes the way we see things?